Have you ever wondered what happens to your recyclables after they're collected from your home or business? Please enjoy watching how Pelletary Waste Systems separates and prepares your recyclables so they can be shipped to end users to be made into new products. As recycling trucks arrive at Kip Street Station, they back into the facility and unload recyclable material onto the tipping floor. The loader then piles up the recycling. When the system needs more material to sort, the loader will grab from the pile and load it into the first piece of equipment, the metering bin. The metering bin's function is to produce a constant flow of material, which is essential to allow the sorting equipment to function properly. After the material is metered, it goes up the first conveyor and drops onto the pre-sort station. At the pre-sort station, we have several quality control people who are pulling out recyclable metal objects like pots, pans, and toasters. They're also pulling out recyclable bags of shredded paper. While pulling out these good recyclables, they're also looking for material that is not supposed to be in the recycling. Ropes, water hoses, large non-bottle plastics, trash, diapers, loose plastic bags, and clothing are sometimes found in the recycling, but are not recyclable in this system. Contaminants will often cause good recyclables to become unrecyclable, and that material will go to the landfill. It's very important to only put approved materials into your recycling container so that good recyclables are not contaminated. As material leaves the pre-sort station, it goes up another conveyor and drops into the old corrugated cardboard, or OCC screen. As the cardboard moves across the screen, it will be touching multiple disks, allowing it to stay on top of the screen and move forward. Smaller recyclables will fall between these disks, drop down, and move on to the next piece of equipment. Under the OCC screen is a debris roll screen, which acts like a glass breaker and breaks bottled glass into quarter-sized pieces. The broken glass then falls through the debris roll screen and goes into a glass cleanup system that removes pieces of metal and other small non-glass items. After the glass and cardboard is removed, the recyclables move on to the newspaper screen. The newspaper screen uses the same concept as the OCC screen, the steep angle uses gravity to force three-dimensional objects like detergent bottles to bounce backwards and off the screen, while two-dimensional newspaper rides up and over. The third and final screen is the polishing screen. Small papers move up and over the screen onto the paper sorting platform. Gravity will cause three-dimensional materials to bounce backwards and off the back of the screen where they're conveyed onto the next process. Just after the polishing screen, we have a quality control optical sorting machine. This equipment uses light and magnets to identify any metal or plastic material that is flattened enough to act like a piece of paper and remain in the paper stream. Once this material is identified, it is hit with a shot of air and removed from the paper stream so that it can go on to be sorted with all the other plastic and metals. At this point, we have a quality control station to look for any paper that has gotten through the screens. Generally, this would be three-dimensional paper products like phone books, balled-up paper, or juice and milk cartons. These materials are pulled and sorted. Now that all papers have been sorted out of the recyclables, they go to the paper platform. There are several stations where people are removing contaminants, such as plastic films or trash from the paper. By the time the paper gets to the end of the conveyor, it will meet the paper mill's specifications. After all the paper products and glass have been removed and sorted, all that's left in the system is plastics and metals and other non-recyclable materials. A magnet removes all of the tin and steel cans. A second magnet system called an eddy current removes the aluminum cans. Since aluminum doesn't stick to a magnet like tin or steel, this piece of equipment spins a magnet extremely fast, and this produces a magnetic field that repels the aluminum cans, causing them to jump off the conveyor and onto their own storage area. After the metals have been removed, all that is left is number one through number seven plastic bottles and trash that hasn't already been pulled out of the system. These bottles go onto our plastic sorting platform where robotic arms use artificial intelligence to target and pull number two plastics like milk jugs, laundry detergent jugs, and shampoo bottles. The bottles that remain on the line go to the optical sorter. This machine shoots a ray of light into the plastic and reads how the light reflects back. A computer analyzes the light and determines if the plastic bottle is a number one plastic or a number three to seven plastic bottle. 
The optic system will then shoot a perfectly controlled blast of air at the bottle, which directs it to either the number one plastic storage area or the number three to number seven plastic storage area. Non-plastic material does not have air shot at it and falls onto the residue conveyor, which leads to the trash. Before this material goes in the trash, we have our final quality control station. The robotic arm uses the same artificial intelligence system and is responsible for pulling out any recyclable material that was not properly sorted. Once material is sorted, it's stored in bunkers. The sorted material gets pushed onto a conveyor that goes into the baler. The baler will compact the loose material into a large brick-like bale that uses metal strapping wire to hold it together. These bales are stored in a storage area and ready to be shipped to an end user. A majority of our paper and cardboard goes to paper mills in Wisconsin and Indiana, where it is made into new paper or cardboard products. Tin and steel cans go to local metal recycling companies and are eventually melted down to make new metal products. Aluminum cans are melted down to make new aluminum cans. Our plastics go to processors that shred the material into flakes, which are used to make new plastic bottles or other plastic products like plastic lumber landscape edging, and drainage tiles. The glass gets color sorted and melted down to make new glass products. Thank you for watching how Pelletary Waste System sorts and prepares your recyclables to be shipped to manufacturers so they can be made into new products. Remember to please keep contaminants out of your recycling so they don't contaminate the good recyclables. Hi there, David from Pelletary Waste Systems here to give you a helpful tip on how to correctly prepare your tin cans for recycling. Make sure the inside is washed out and free of any food residue. You can keep the label on, take the top, put it inside, and pinch closed so that that lid can stay with the tin can. The reason that's important is that a lid is two-dimensional, like a piece of paper, and in a system like ours, this tin lid will end up acting like a piece of paper which will contaminate the paper stream. Hi, David from Pelletary Waste Systems here to give you a quick tip on how to properly prepare a bottle for recycling. Previously you may have been told that the caps need to be taken off in order to have this bottle properly prepared. That's not the case anymore. We actually prefer that you put the lids on and then put them into the recycling. Feel free to leave your wrapping on the outside on the bottle. Just make sure it's free from any kind of liquids. Even water can be considered a contaminant in the recycling stream because it throws off the natural weight that this container is supposed to be when it's empty. If you have a container that has some food residue in it, please just take a moment and rinse it out. Contamination like this inside of a container can actually cause what would be a good clean recyclable to go into the trash because of the food content. Thank you for taking that additional step. Hi, David from Pelletary Waste Systems here to give you a quick tip on how to recycle properly. Did you know that water is a contaminant in the recycling stream? Water and moisture can cause paper and cardboard to disintegrate through our system, making it unrecyclable and in many unfortunate events it has to go to the landfill for disposal. So keep your lids closed. You never know in Wisconsin when it's going to rain or snow and you'd hate to see all of that good recycling and all that effort you put into it to get it recycled correctly go to waste because the lids were open and your cardboard and paper are now ruined. Hi, David from Pelletary Waste Systems here to give you a quick tip on how to recycle all those online shopping boxes that are coming to your door. Unfortunately, the styrofoam and the films that are used in packaging, especially styrofoam peanuts, are not recyclable in our system. So please remove these, put these in the trash, and then break down your box so it's nice and flat and put it into your recycling. Also, please don't put other recyclables inside of your box. Unfortunately, 
a lot of the times these recyclables won't fall out and will actually contaminate the cardboard. Hi, David here from Pelletary Waste Systems, and today we're going to talk about how to properly prepare your shredded paper for recycling. At Pelletary Waste, we ask that you use a clear plastic bag, and please make sure that that bag is no bigger than a basketball. We use clear plastic bags because the person picking on the line needs to be able to see that there's shredded paper inside of it. When a plastic bag is filled with shredded paper bigger than a basketball, we have found that it's more likely to rip open before we have a chance to get it out of the system. If you have confidential papers that need to be shredded, feel free to visit our website where we have a list of all the free shred events that we put on throughout the year. Hi, David from Pelletary Waste Systems. Today we're gonna to talk about how to properly prepare an aluminum can for recycling. When you're done with your can, Make sure it's empty. Make sure all the liquids are out of it and then put it right in your recycling. Our system is designed to recycle these cans in the form that they're in, not in a flattened form. A flattened piece of aluminum actually acts like a piece of paper and the system confuses it with a piece of paper and it will contaminate the paper stream. So don't flatten your cans, just throw them in the recycling after you've emptied them out. Thank you.